students medicoma presents to you polycystic ovarian syndrome so what basically polycystic ovarian syndrome is it is basically a star and this star is known as p cos star this star of polycystic ovarian syndrome is characterized by five basic abnormality the number first is hyperandrogenism the second feature in this star is menstrual abnormalities star is many cysts in the ovary the fourth feature of this star is decreased fertility so the first one was hyperandrogenism the second one is uh, menstrual abnormalities and after it there are many cysts in the ovaries and the fourth one is decrease fertility and the last one is chronic and ovulation so this star is basically polycystic ovarian syndrome and it is comprised of hyperandrogenism means that androgen amount is increased androgens are increased in the female and what are the androgens for example testosterone this is increased secondly there are menstrual abnormalities menstrual abnormalities in this female there are many cysts in the ovaries it means that this ovary is polycystic the fourth one if there are that much problems in the ovary there is decreased fertility and the final one is chronic anovulation so now let's describe what basically the pathology is here in this female so what are these four points hyperandrogenism menstrual abnormalities many cysts in the ovaries and decreased fertility and chronic anovulation so now, now come towards the pathophysiology of this condition what happens basically here in this region in the brain there is a gland known as pituitary gland this pituitary gland normally secretes two hormones that are gonadotropes fsh and lh so what is the function of FSH? The function of FSH is the development of follicles. And what is the function of LH? The function of LH is luteinization, ovulation, and then luteinization. So to describe it, let's draw an ovary in this female let's say it is an ovary and then in this ovary there are there is a an egg and that is this egg is surrounded by certain cells and these cells are known as granulosa cells and which is then again surrounded by certain cell known as theca cells so this red one is our egg this egg is surrounded by granulosa cell and this granulosa cells are surrounded by theca cell so the message of LH the message of LH onto this follicle is that it stimulates theca cells to produce androgens normally and FSH is responsible for the growth of these follicles and when these follicles grow they will produce 
estrogen. So, what basically LH stimulates theta cell to produce androgen, and when this androgen moves towards the granulosa cell, the FSH is here to, for, which is responsible for the growth of granulosa cell, and these granulosa cell in turn converts these androgens into estrogen. So what basically the pathology is in polycystic ovarian syndrome, in polycystic ovarian syndrome there is imbalance between LH and FSH, such that LH is greater and FSH is less. The amount of LH in the body is greater and FSH is less. Normally what happens, normally if this is a, four, it is a 28 day cycle and it is the 14 day, the FSH is always above the LH. And here and the F, and LH is always or almost always below the FSH. But on the 14 day there is an LH surge. But what the pathology is here, here it is like LH is always above the FSH. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, LH is above the FSH. So, when LH is above the FSH, meaning the concentration of LH is greater, this LH will stimulate theta cell to produce a lot of androgens. But there is not, a, there is not much FSH for the production of granulosa cell, so there will be decrease of estrogen. estrogen. So what happens due to the due to the imbalance of LH and FSH, we have greater androgens in the body and less estrogen in the body. So this androgen, it's as it's greater in the body, this will have certain side effects. Like this female will develop this is a pretty female, she will develop her sweetism. This female will now develop her sweetism, meaning that she will have uh, a male, uh, a male pattern of facial, facial hairs. So, due to this increased androgen, this is one of the clinical uh, effect. Now, due to this decreased estrogen, as the amount of estrogen in this female is decreased, so what will happen basically? Basically, this follicle is not growing and this is not secreting much amount of estrogen. So, there will be. This less amount of estrogen is, will not work properly and there will be menstrual abnormalities in this patient. Okay, now, now as this estrogen is not produced here, there is a lot of androgens flowing in our blood. There are a lot of androgens flowing in our blood. Okay, now it is not known why, but Polycystic ovarian syndrome is almost always associated with certain other abnormalities and one of which is obesity. It is almost always associated with obesity. It is also almost always associated with insulin resistance and many arteriosclerosis also develop with it. It is not known to pathologists that how it happens, but they know that whenever there is polycystic ovarian syndrome, there is obesity, there is insulin resistance, and there is arteriosclerosis. So, if this woman is obese, if this woman is obese, means she is having a lot of fat in the body. She is having a lot of fat in the body. So when this flow, when this androgen, which is greater in the circulation, this androgen will move through these fats. This androgen will be converted into estrone. This androgen will be converted into estrone. And what will be the effect of estrone? This estrone will result in endometrial hyperplasia. means that this estrogen will go toward the endometrium of the patient and there will be endometrial, it will on the endometrial glands and there will be endometrial hyperplasia. 
So what was pathology till now? We are having imbalance between LH and FSH and due to this increased amount of LH we are having increased androgens and because of the androgens we develop uh, male pattern uh, hairs uh, which is known as hirsutism. Secondly, these patients, most of these patients uh, are associated with, uh, there, there is obesity in these patients and due to this obesity, there is a lot of fat in this patient and when these androgens are floating, these androgens will move, toward, uh, move through these fat and they will convert into the estrone and this is estrone will result in endometrial hyperplasia. So, as there is endometrial hyperplasia, so this endometrial hyperplasia means that there is a lot of endometrial mass, this will result in irregular menstrual bleeding so in the definition we said that there were many cysts and this will also result in chronic infertility so in the definition we said that there are five points what were those five points we write here number one was number one was there, there was decreased fertility there was chronic anovulation there was hyperandrogenism, many cysts. Hyperandrogenism, there were polycysts, many cysts. Chronic anovulation. Uh, anovulation is done, hyperfertilization, and there is uh, ab abnormal menstrual bleeding. Abnormal menstrual bleeding. So now we have reached to. We have cancelled abnormal menstrual bleeding. How? Because uh, how this endometrial normal bleeding occurs? This endometrial this is because of endometrial hyperplasia. So due to endometrial hyperplasia, there will be abnormal or irregular menstrual bleeding, and there will be an ovulation. Why will be an why will be an ovulation present there? Let us explain this point. So in this female, there are a lot of in this female. If this is the ovary, there are a lot of cysts present there. There are a lot of cysts present already here. And secondly, let's if this is the 14-day cycle, so and this is the concentration of normal concentration of this is this is FSH and if this is L this is what happens normally. But in this patient, what is the case? LH is constantly elevated, but there is no LH surge. LH is constantly elevated and it is above. It is above the uh, FSH line, and there is no LH surge, so there will be no ovulation there will be no ovulation so let's cancel there will be no ovulation and this condition is known as an ovulation so now if there is no uh, ovulation there the fertility will absolutely decrease because the egg is not ovulating egg is not moving out so it is not moving out the fertility of this patient will decrease and second cause of this decreased fertility is that there is endometrial hyperplasia in this patient Okay, now, and these, there are many cysts. Why are there many cysts in this patient? There are many cysts because uh, uh, follicles are passing through the stages of development, but there is no FSH. There is, FSH is responsible for the development of granulosa cell. So as there is no FSH, there is no FSH or less amount of FSH, this follicle is not developing this follicle is not developing it is not undergoing uh, the process of increase in mass of the granulosa cell so it will eventually uh, form a cyst it will eventually form a cyst whenever it does not ovulate it will result in the formation of a cyst so as as time passes by these cysts will accumulate in this patient and there will be condition known as polycystic ovarian syndrome okay now this is also there and what is the last one there will be uh, another, there will be Hyperandrogenism and it is due to it is due to imbalance between the LH and FSH. So as LH is greater, so LH will, uh, will stimulate the theca cell to produce a lot of androgen. So this was about the pathophysiology of the disease, and it's normally associated with three other conditions. One, uh, which are these three conditions? Obesity, obesity insulin, insulin resistance, resistance and, and arter arteriosclerosis. So this insulin resistance will lead to uh, diabetes mellitus after 10 to 15 years. So there are three conditions which are commonly associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome, insulin resistance, obesity and uh, arteriosclerosis. Now we have, uh, we move toward the morphology. So in morphology, uh, I, let me show you a gross image.
kindly look at this diagram. This is an MRI, MRI of the ovary. And you can see in this MRI, there are a lot of cysts present in this ovary and this is known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay, so it was an MRI of this patient. Now, uh, what do we see under microscope? Microscope and gross. Microscope and gross. So, grossly we can, we'll be able to see that our ovary is enlarged. Ovary is enlarged. And this enlargement is about twice its normal size. Twice its normal size. Secondly, the color of the ovary will be somewhat tan or gray or whitish in color. The color of ovary will also change and it will be enlarged. So what will we see under microscope? If we examine the ovaries under microscope, we will be able to see that if this is the ovary, there will be a condition known as hyperthecosis. So what basically is hyperthecosis? Let me show you. Hyperthecosis is also known as hyperplasia of the stroma. So in this picture, you can see that there in, the, in this right side of the picture, there, the stroma is hypercellular and this hypercellularity is known as hyperthecosis. Secondly, you can see that these follicles are greater in number and they are enlarged. First point was that the, the stroma is uh, the hypercellular. Second point is these, these uh, um, follicles are enlarged, the cysts are enlarged. And the third point is that you can see here in the right that the cortex, this is the cortex. And this cortex is normally thin. This, in this uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, cortex is thickened. So what we see in polycystic ovarian syndrome, in polycystic ovarian syndrome under microscope, we can see hyperthecosis of stroma. Hyperthecosis of stroma or it is known as or hyperplasia of stroma. We can also see that the follicles will be follicles will be enlarged. There are many cysts, many cysts and hypercellularity of stroma so these are the points we see under microscope now tell you now i'm telling you basically that this hyperthecosis of stroma is normally a characteristic of postmenopausal women postmenopausal women but it may be present in uh, in the uh, in the reproductive women in which condition in polycystic Ovarian syndrome. Basically, this is a pathology of postmenopausal women, but it can be present in the women of reproductive age in condition known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. So now we will just summarize our, uh, our lecture. So what was the, what was the basic definition of polycystic ovarian syndrome? In polycystic ovarian syndrome, there will be number first, there will be hyperandrogenism. The hyperandrogenism. The second one, there will be infertility or decrease in fertility. The third one, there will be you know, end of chronic end ovulation. There will be chronic end ovulation, there will be abnormal menstrual bleeding and there will be many cysts in the ovaries. This condition is associated with very, three very important conditions. Obesity, the second one is the insulin resistance, insulin resistance and this insulin resistance will lead to diabetes mellitus. And the third one is the Muscular abnormalities like arteriosclerosis. So, and what is uh, what will we see? And uh, grossly, we will see that the ovary is enlarged and it will be tan or, or gray in color. Under microscope, we will be able to see that the, uh, there will be a condition known as hyperthecosis of stroma, and then this or, or the hyperplasia of the stroma. The stroma will be hypercellular. Secondly, there will be many cysts, the follicles will be enlarged, and the cortex will be taken. Thank you.